If you're considering moving to Florida, or especially the Tampa Bay area, this video is for you. I'm gonna talk about 12 reasons why Florida might not be for you. Here they are. I'm Sam, and welcome to the Living in Tampa, Florida channel. Every single week, we post videos on here about what it's like to live, work, and play in the Tampa, Florida area. So if that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, I am a licensed realtor in the state of Florida, so if you have any real estate specific questions, please reach out. My phone number and email are right there on the screen. Please call, text, or email anytime. I love to connect with people that are moving here or even considering moving here. Let's get into the reasons why Florida might not be for you. If you're considering moving to Florida, make sure you stick around for number 12 because it directly applies to 2020 and 2021. Number one, the weather. It is really hot. For four months of the year, it is really, really hot. Like sweat through your clothes hot. Like you're just running inside to get into the air conditioning hot. During the heat of the summer, we spent almost $400 on electricity just to keep our house cool. We live in an 1800 square foot house. That's kind of old, so it has bad insulation, but it was still a lot of money to spend just to be comfortable in our own home. Not only is it hot, it's really, really humid all year around. But if that's a deal breaker for you and you just can't stand the humidity, this is not the place for you. Florida is pretty much like an island. Even if you look at the map right here, look at this big peninsula coming out into the Gulf of Mexico and into the Atlantic Ocean. Florida feels like an island based on how humid it is. Maybe you'll get used to it, maybe you won't. Maybe your hair will be frizzy forever. It's not just the heat and the humidity, but the hurricanes and the wind and the rain and the lightning. Hurricanes happen pretty much every year. Of course, they vary. You never really know how hard they're gonna hit or where exactly they're gonna hit until like the last minute. And don't wait until the last minute to get those supplies. If you need a generator, if you need water, these kind of things sell out and stores close down and people sometimes even leave town. Our house is in a flood zone and when we moved in September of 2020, I had to wait like four or five weeks to even cut the grass because there was like three inches of water in our entire yard. You couldn't take a step in the grass without soaking through over the soles of your shoes. This was exhausting and frustrating. The Tampa Bay area is the lightning capital of the world. I mean, there's a lot of lightning. Sure, they have some mitigation stuff to like absorb the lightning so if your building gets struck, you don't die, but it is, can still be scary and it happens a lot. With all these storms, there's a lot of wind and a lot of rain. Sometimes the wind causes number two, power outages. The reason this happens is because branches fall on power lines and whenever that happens, the whole system trips. So the city has to come out, remove the power lines, make sure it's safe to turn these systems back on before they turn them back on. There was a storm a few months ago and the power at our house was out for 22 hours. We live in an older area of town and the trees behind our house are right under the power line. So whenever there's high wind, some of these branches break, they fall on the lines, blah, blah, blah. A wise person might ask, why don't they just cut down all the trees? But they won't cut down the trees. Florida is very protective of their trees and especially of hardwood trees because they help hold the ground together. Yes, they help hold the ground together. And that takes us to number three, erosion the ground is kind of disappearing. And I'm not just talking about sinkholes where it just suddenly drops out from underneath you, but we do have those. But what I'm talking about is just the gradual erosion of all the ground around a house. I experienced this recently when I was building a shed. I dug some holes for the concrete footers and then it rained the next day. And so much of the ground underneath where I had dug the holes was just gone. Honestly, I don't know how when I stood on the ground, it didn't just sink in. I went ahead and built the shed there. Well, check back with me in a few years. We'll see if it's still there. Number four, the people. There is some anti-outsider sentiment in Florida, 
especially since it's growing so fast. People are moving here from the Northeast, from California, from Texas, from Pennsylvania. Those are just my clients right now. They're moving from every state in the US and, and from countries all over the world. And the locals often feel like they're being invaded. It affects their traffic, it affects their housing market, it affects their restaurants, all these kind of things. So you will occasionally get like an anti-outsider vibe where people are just kind of saying like, go back to your own home. Number five, weeds. I moved here from Colorado not too long ago. I'm not talking about that kind of weed. I'm talking about the weeds in your yard. The weeds in your yard are gonna grow like crazy. They're gonna try to take over almost the entire year. I actually think our growing season is about 11 months here. What does that mean for you if you're gonna move here? You're gonna be mowing a lot or you're gonna be paying a company to come mow a lot. Either way, it really is kind of a hassle. Number six, termite damage and water damage. This is really common with houses around here. People often say it's not if, but when you get termite damage. And there's a few different types of termites here. There's the subterranean termites that come from the ground, and there are the swarming termites that come in the air. And these affect structures very differently. But even if you're thinking about just building a wooden shed outside, you have to think about these kind of things because there's a lot of bugs and there's a lot of water. It's gonna get damaged. Number seven, going back to that anti-outsider sentiment, vacationers and snowbirds flock to this state. Number seven, vacationers. People visit here all the time. You've probably done it. You've probably come on a vacation here and you look out of place. You're gonna experience people looking out of place all the time, or maybe they're stopping at a weird place in the road or they're asking a confusing question at a restaurant. If that kind of thing bothers you, Florida might not be for you. Number eight, mosquitoes. Probably my least favorite thing about Florida, there are so many mosquitoes and I get bit like crazy. It seems like nobody else around me is getting bit and I suddenly have 30 bites on my ankles. This happens to me a lot. So there are certain times of the year where I avoid going outside or I avoid going to certain parks because I know they're a little more muggy and they're gonna have more mosquitoes. Of course, there are ways to keep them away. Bug spray, there's bracelets, there's those little thermocell things that release some kind of gas to keep them away. I have tried all those things. They don't really work for me. All right, we gave mosquitoes their own number. I'm gonna put the rest of wildlife in number nine. There's a lot of wildlife here. It's not just mosquitoes, it's lizards. There's lizards everywhere. I was actually showing a house not too long ago and in the listing notes, it said, please make sure you close doors very quickly because the owner is deathly afraid of lizards. That might sound confusing to you, but there are tons of lizards here. Sometimes when I'm walking down the sidewalk, it feels like every step I take, one runs away from me. They are very scared of people. They don't wanna get caught. Next on the list is cockroaches. There are big cockroaches here. My wife is pretty scared of them and she grew up here. They're hard to catch too and you end up like squishing them against the wall and it's gross. You can get an exterminator to come spray for them and it keeps them mostly out of your house, but it's such a hassle. And then you have to be so careful about not leaving food out at all. All these things that are just annoying about cockroaches. There's also a certain time of the year where the ants are trying to get in your house like crazy. And that's just a hassle too. You can get the little traps and the little poison for them, but it's still just annoying. If you have little kids or pets, you're a little more cautious of that kind of stuff. And it's just something else to deal with. Fire ants. These ones are the ones that have the mounds out in the park and then they'll crawl up your leg and you'll get about 20 on your leg and you're like, oh shoot, there's a bunch of ants on my leg. And then suddenly they send this signal to each other to all bite you at the same time. And it hurts. And then you're freaking out, trying to sweep one leg off while you're like talking on the phone or it happened to me while I was like scooping sand into, into these bags before the hurricane. And I was like scooping sand out in the rain and like trying to get the fire ants off my, my leg as they were like biting me. It was exhausting. Other wildlife that we do have a lot of, alligators and snakes. You're not gonna see them a whole lot, but they are out there. And of course, whenever you do see them, it's pretty startling. 
Number 10 reason Florida might not be for you, you have to use your GPS a lot. With so much coastline and so much other bodies of water and rivers and lakes and stuff like that, you have to use your GPS a lot. Roads don't always go straight, they curve around things, and roads sometimes just suddenly end at a canal that runs through a neighborhood or something like that. So you will have to use your GPS quite a bit. Number 11, allergies. There is always something blooming or pollinating or causing some kind of allergies down here. Like I said before, with such a long growing season, there's just always something that could be irritating your allergies. If you already suffer from allergies, it might be worse down here. Number 12, no masks. People down here don't wanna wear masks. Sometimes people down here refuse to wear masks. You'll even go into restaurants where people aren't and people aren't even being told to. If that's something that's important to you, as it's important to so many people right now, it might not be the right time for you to move to Florida. Floridians have a real rebellious streak. I see this in my father-in-law. One time I was riding in the car with him to a park. My little daughter was in the back seat and he ran a stop sign. I said, hey, you ran that stop sign. And, and this was a four-way stop. There were like other cars there. And his response when I told him he ran the stop sign was like, oh, well, I pay my taxes. That is not an uncommon type response for a local here. If that kind of rebellious spirit is something that really bothers you, Florida's probably not the place for you. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. And if you don't wanna miss any of our other videos in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell next to it to make sure you're notified whenever a new video comes out. Again, please reach out to me if you have any real estate specific questions. Call, text, email, day or night. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for coming by.